So I'm mixing up a couple of colours that I think are relevant to this sphere. Using a lot of cerulean. There's a little bit of ultramarine violet going in there because I'm going to copy Susie's one that I was wearing earlier. And So I've got some colours here. Now I want to keep my colours nice and wet, so I'm going to use uh, some fluid retarder, which just keeps the uh, paint wetter for longer. So a little tiny drop in each of those colours that I've mixed up. And actually you could, in fact, put this in a spray bottle so it goes out nice and evenly on your... Uh, but Kim, is this technique the same for oils? Yes, this technique would work absolutely with oils, but you don't have to put that in oils because the oils will no, stay wet. Well. Yeah, so a little bit of flow improver in all of those. Right, so I'm going to take my two different brushes and pick up my uh, different colours. So I'm going to go in with my darkest colour first, I think. So that's down here at the bottom of my sphere. Now that's going to stay nice and wet because there is plenty of uh, colour there. So it's the amount of paint you put on and there's also plenty of the retarder and the flow improver. So the next colour goes on there and because it's wet, it bl blends in. So all these colours are nice and wet, they're all going on wet to a dry background. So it's a bit like when I was doing my pastel, it's almost like putting the colour on in a patchwork way. But here I've got several colours and I'm blending them into each other. So also see how I'm holding the brush. Keep changing the angle of the brush. So if I keep changing the angle of the brush, you're going to get these lovely marks that blend the two colours together. But you've really got to have the base colour underneath. Yeah, I think it, 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 yeah, it helps so to have doing, the colour block. So if you were there. doing a face, yeah. would you, could you just do a random sort of, well, obviously not random, but like a generic sort of skin colour underneath? You could do, or you could choose, really look at that person's face and choose the colour that you think is most appropriate to the base of their yeah. particular skin tone. Yes. And then go the answer is yes, top. though. You could do that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start introducing some so of these colour uh, colour lighter colours. Colour. You're not rinsing your brush up, are you? No. I'm using light liquid oil paints. I'm using two brushes to blend the wet paint into each, yeah, the, the, the different wet colours into each other. So less pressure as you, as you go. So usually th th that would be a horrible contrast, wouldn't it? But because I'm using these sort of soft brush strokes here, you're keeping one brush essentially paler than the other. Yeah. By putting less on my brush as well helps me to blend one colour into another. So I'm going to go for my middle colour again, try and blend this, this bit in. So the softer marks really help that sort of seamless blending. Some places don't need to be blended as much as others because they're not so, they've got more of a contrast because it's a reflective object. So I'm going to go in my darker colour down here. Again, see the way I'm using the paintbrush, lots of different angles, I keep changing the, the way I move the paintbrush, so I get a nice sort of organic looking effect, a little bit too much colour on that brush, so I'm going to get rid of that. So less colour, you see, if I move the paintbrush around at those different angles, I'm getting that real blended effect. So I haven't got lots of paint on, I'm just, this is really going to be carefully blended. Not so much pressure, move the angle of my wrist, use my elbow a bit more and I'm going to get some lovely marks to seamlessly, well hopefully seamlessly, blend these colours through. So 
So it starts then to look spherical. I'm going to go in with a little light, just introducing an even lighter colour now. So where everything's wet, blend that round, using that beautiful round tip of the filbert brush to get a really nice smooth mark. using that brush at the different angles again to really, really blend that through. And I've used lots of colours there, haven't I? Not been using the same colour. I'm going to go in for a slightly different colour now, this, this greeny colour. Just here, see, I see some reflections that look a little bit more green than blue. And then I can blend that in into my lighter colour with the other brush. Really getting that lovely blended smooth finish now going in even lighter now up here just up here we're going to go for this really sort of light almost like a, a uh, it, it's a cerulean blue with lots of white so it's almost like a baby blue a warm baby blue there we are Got nice light bits there as well I'm going to go in with some really dark again, just over here. Just blend that in to a slightly lighter colour. So where, when I need a harder mark, when I need more paint distributed, I press harder. Then softer brush strokes to blend that out into the lighter colours. That will give you your really blended sphere and then the next step when that's dry is to go in with your highlights. I'm going to put a bit more of the really light colour because I still think it's really rather light around the top and I can build that up. See because I've got the acrylic retarder in there and I've got the uh, flow improver it helps the colour stay wetter longer so I'm, I've got the, the ability to blend it and move it around and manipulate it for a little bit longer than I would do normally with acrylic colour. I think I'm going to keep it like that. Lovely. So, so try you, that. If you wanted to put in the sort of like the definite lights, you press away. Yeah, wait till it's dry. Yeah, we'd just do the blending bit now. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us what was that? Wet. Into wet blending. 